In the last video, we discovered these two very important results, that if we apply this positive operator to this function xi over here, we would arrive at a new function that satisfies the Schrodinger equation with this new energy level. And the same goes for this minus operator over here, except the energy level is going to be decreased by h bar times omega. So this immediately leads to a problem. So let's say I have a function xi that satisfies the Schrodinger equation with energy level e. So this implies that a minus psi also satisfy the Schrodinger equation with energy level e minus h omega. And so this, since this is also a solution to the Schrodinger equation, it also implies that a minus a minus psi is also a solution with energy level e minus 2 h bar omega and so on. This can go on forever. So it seems to imply that there are solutions where the energy level is going to be is going to reach negative infinity. But that is something we don't want because we need to require the energy to be always larger than the minimum of the potential. And in this case, the potential is equal to 1 half m omega squared x squared, which is always larger than or equal to 0. So we need this to be true in order for our solution to be normalizable. And if it, this is not true, you can check out uh, problem 2.2 in Griffith's book. You'll see that uh, by the structure of the Schrodinger equation, it would lead to a, to a function xi that would not be normalizable. So you won't be able to integrate it to get a 1. So that would not be compatible with the probability interpretation of quantum mechanics. So this is something we would actually want to avoid. And now, uh, in order to get around this problem, we can, we can set up a certain condition to avoid this from happening. So as before, we start off with xi, and then we have e, and then we just keep applying a minus, and then to keep getting lower energy states, and this is going to keep going until we reach a certain point, we reach a certain energy level, let's call it E0, and then the corresponding function, I'll call it xi0. So we're going to set a very special condition for the state over here. So we keep on decreasing until we reach the state. Once we reach the state, if we apply the minus operator to xi0 again, I'm going to require this to be equal to 0. And then this condition actually solves all the problem that that uh, came along with this uh, with this discussion over here. So as you can see, if we apply the a minus operator to xi naught, and then we reach zero, if we apply a minus to the next function that arises from this, which is incidentally zero, we'll just get zero. So in that case, we can't keep on pushing our energy level to negative infinity indefinitely. It's going to have to stop at e naught because the next function that we get is going to just going to be equal to zero. So using this condition over here, we can at the same time avoid this problem over here, as well as satisfying this relationship at the same time. So we're going to use, so this is an extra condition that we've discovered for the solutions that we're looking for. We've discovered that there exists this uh, xi naught function such that a minus xi naught is going to be equal to zero. And so let's try to solve this. Uh, so this is essentially a differential equation. So let's try to solve this to see what xi naught should be. So we call that the a, a plus and minus operators, they're defined in such a way. And so I'm going to apply a minus to xi naught. And then in that case, that means I'm applying this operator. So this is negative, then this is plus ip. So I'm applying this operator to xi naught. And then now I need to solve this differential equation. So first of all, these uh, constants, I can just bring them to the other side. They're all zero, so they magically go away, which is always a good thing. And the momentum operator becomes this. The i's, they cancel out. So in the end, we have h bar d xi naught dx plus m omega x xi naught equal to zero. So now we, we're left with the task of solving this rather simple differential equation. So solving that, I'm just going to have to move the terms to the other side. m omega x divided by h bar. And then I'm going to dump this over to the other side. And then I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to dx. And then obviously for the right hand side, we get this expression over here, plus the constant of integration. Here I'm going to use substitution, and this just becomes natural log of psi. And then raising both sides to the power of e, I get some constant times e to the power of negative omega 
2h x squared. So this is a very important result. We found one solution to this Kronecker equation. What we're left to do now is to find this a over here. We can find this by normalizing this function over here. So we know that this expression here has to be equal to 1, right, in order to fulfill that probability interpretation. So see that a squared is equal to this expression over here. So a squared times this integral over here is going to be equal to 1. And then this integral is pretty difficult to solve, and we're going to have to invoke this result over here. So this is the so-called Gaussian integral. And then you can actually use a double integral to prove this, but uh, once, you, once you prove the value of this, you'll find that this is actually equal to the square root of pi. So you have, if you have constants here, you just compensate by multiplying it by some factors. So since we have some constants over here, we need to compensate by multiplying it by these factors. So you can show that this is true by just doing substitution. So now we've arrived at an expression that allows us to see what this a should be. So uh, on the right hand side, all this should be equal to 1. And on the left hand side, we have pi h divided by m over here. So you see that a is equal to m omega divided by pi h 1 fourth. So this is the constant that's going to help us normalize this function over here. And so because of this, you see that our psi naught, this special function over here that kind of stops our, our uh, functions from heading to an energy level of negative infinity, it has a corresponding function that looks like this. So this is what psi naught should be. So now we found the function xi0, and we, so we can also find the energy level e0. So recall that we have a function, and then we also have its corresponding energy level. And then we can find the energy level by using the Schrodinger equation. So xi0 is a, is a solution to the Schrodinger equation, so it should satisfy this expression with a corresponding energy level. And then for this h over here, I'm going to use one of the results we derived before. We're going to use this expression here, which we derived in one of the earlier videos. And I've chosen this particular one where the minus one is at, on the right hand side because once this gets absorbed into the into the bracket, you'll see that it's going to be equal to zero. Because by definition, well, it has to be zero, right? So this expression here is equal to zero, which is always a good thing. So now all we're left with is one half h bar omega xi naught equal to e naught xi naught. So just canceling this out, we see that the energy level corresponding to xi naught is equal to 1 half h bar omega. So now we've arrived at a very important solution. We found one of the solutions and its corresponding energy level. And then thanks to the positive operator over here, the a plus, because we know that each time we apply this to a solution to the Schrodinger equation, we're going to get a new solution with a higher energy level. Once we've found this uh, psi naught over here, we can just keep applying a plus over here to get all the other solutions.